it is Tash B and I am super excited to have uh, my guest today um, being Joanne from Rich Life by Design. Now because who doesn't want to write a book? Hands up, who wants to write a book? Me, I know I do, I definitely want to write a book. Um, it's definitely on my bucket list of things to do, which is why I'm super, super excited to have Joanne here to share some insights and bits and pieces with us because that is exactly what Joanne does, is that she works with people to help them write books, publish books, get that story that they've got hidden inside them out into the world. So welcome, Joanne. Thank you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, fill us in. Let's start from the start. How did you get into this? Because you've been, you've worked in publishing for, can I say forever? Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to sound cruel by saying forever, but it's kind of been your, your life journey, hasn't it? Working in publishing and in that space. Yep. It is. I know. I mean, a lot of people in this industry have a similar kind of, you know, um, they started out wanting to be a writer when they were little and then I was going to be a journalist and then I went to university and did um, <clears throat> journalism and English literature, which are like two opposing camps, actually. Right. Where, you know, um, I think I was the only person doing those as two majors, actually. One was PR. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be quite an interesting mix with English well, lit. And um, each looked down on the other, which was strange, but I loved both. <laughs> absolutely loved both. Yeah. Uh, and I moved into the book publishing industry, which was an absolute dream come true. It is a bit of a glamour industry. It's, you know, like working in fashion and magazines and things like, you know, book publishing is yeah. kind of that way. So I was very focused and determined and I got my foot in the door as the assistant to the publisher's assistant yes. <laughs> at a publishing company. And I got to see manuscripts when they came in, which back then would have, you know, coffee stain mugs, you know, <laughs> mugs on them. And um, that was brilliant. And then I moved into marketing as well, which was fantastic because I got to see, okay, once we've got these beautiful books, and even before that, we need to look at the marketing and how we're going to get these. So this is the books. marketing of the books. So as still well, with yeah. the same publishing house? Yes, yeah. I did. I did stay with the same company for that. And then and in, um, in my spare time, I was doing a grad dip in editing and publishing. So I was very, very, very focused because um, yes. I really wanted to become a book editor. That was my, my big thing. And then I did become a book editor um, for Lonely Planet, which was just amazing, getting travel vicariously through these books. And I worked in the food department as well, specialised in working on food books. Yes. So that was just like, oh, that was just the holy grail for me. Um, yeah, and then I like that too, don't you? You enjoy that that space. So it's kind of a, a beautiful mixture. I love food. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, and living in Melbourne at the time, you know, I was really part of the food scene down there and yes. used to review restaurants and it was just a heap of fun because we did it at a restaurant guide. Um, and then I had my babies and I went freelance and I have been ever since then working for myself, um, continuing to work on books. Uh, and then oh, about eight years ago, I thought I'd love to help people with coaching. So I moved into the coaching space and the whole online world, which is something I haven't really had a lot to do with. So I learned so much as all of us have had to when we start our businesses about, you know, how to run an online business. So it was phenomenal and so different to be out there in the world in that way rather than just at home editing. Uh, and then I moved into sort of, I honed that in from general life coaching into money mindset coaching because I saw so many people had issues about this. Yeah. But, you know, I still kept getting asked over and over and over about books and I was asked to be a co-author on a, a book um, that had a lot of contributing authors and I helped so much with the production behind the scenes of that book as well and helped it, saw the um, process we went through to get it to be a Kindle, uh, not Kindle, uh, Amazon bestseller. Fantastic. Yeah, it was really fun to be part of that process. All of us watching across the world, with yeah. the authors from around the world, taking screenshots of when it was, um, you know, getting to number one in different areas. Um, and I just thought, okay, I still love creating books i still love the whole production process and i know it's what i am so good at and have such a, an eye for and such a high level of um, quality and i was seeing also people struggling with self-publishing their books um, and the books just often don't reflect the quality of what the message is that people have to offer and their brand so if they're wanting to attract high quality clients um, having a book that is hard to read does not look good, looks obviously self-published, 
is not the best ambassador for its business. Yeah. Um, and although we do say a book is a big business card, I actually see it as more than that. I see it as, you know, we're all here to change the world and bring things of high vibration into the world. And for me, that's, I just think that's my gift is being able to produce high quality books yeah. that people love and then they reflect well on brands and then people go and invest more in programs that you have to offer that, you know, make even more of a transformation because books can transform in themselves but there are people who want that next step as well and, and who work, want to work with you personally. Yeah. So that's where we're at. And so I've helped a few ladies through their books. Yes. <laughs> so how many books are you up to now? Or, or have you lost count? <laughs> no, no. Well, um, I've been taking it slow because I had some health issues last year. So everything right. sort of got put on hold. And that was really good um, for me in terms of self-care and looking at what I can do. So part of um, realizing that is that I want to help more people but the best way for me to do that is to do it in um, to have other people me overseeing but having other people yes. helping do a lot of the running of the business and also running more group-based programs so that's sort of where I'm heading now um, and I think that's that's still me fulfilling my mission of helping yes. raise the quality of self-published books yeah. um, for entrepreneurs so yes but we decided to talk today because I know how hard it is. I mean, I'm in so many forums for business yes. people and business women in particular who everybody wants to write a book. You know, yeah. Why? Why, why do you think so many people want to write, write, write a book? What's going on there? Is it ego or is it just, we've just got this story that's bursting to be shared? No, I think the people that I come across, it is, they've got, I mean, a lot of people don't also want to write a book. They know that is nothing they'd want to touch with a barge pole. You know, that's just not their thing. But if you... Really? Is there people in, like that out there in the world? I like that. I know. <laughs> I <don't believe. laughs> but the ones who do, it's something they keep getting nagged about yes. it in their own mind. You know, they keep getting that, that intuitive hit when they mm -hmm. see something about their topic and they just think, oh, yeah. I should be writing a book and they know I mean we all get those hits and we know we should be following them um, it's whether all of us have the courage to actually get started yes yeah. yeah absolutely so we're going to be talking today about how to actually make a start Fabulous. <laughs> because because I think that's it too is is getting is understanding what is involved in writing a book because you know, I, I must admit that I, whilst I'm, you know, I, I know that I've got it there, it's not quite ready to come out yet, but it's definitely there. But then it's also too that thought of, well, hang on a second, whilst I've got a great background in copywriting and in marketing and, and I've got a story to share, yeah. that's a little bit different to breaking it down into chapters and making something that's readable for, you know, what, 100 plus pages, but what's going to keep people turning? Yes, and it is a definite skill. Um, and like with anything, it's worth getting the help. There yeah. is so much you can do yourself in this day and age, so much information you can find on Google. Um, but there's that level of discernment. It's like when you do your own design. <laughs> you know, we all think we're brilliant at it, but you know, it may not be as professional looking as we would like in someone else's eyes. And so having a professional designer do that work for us, what a difference it makes. Oh, look, absolutely. I'm I'm with you there too, is that yeah. uh, so getting, getting help and gentle. professional advice. Yes. Needing to gently um, advise people that word and publisher are not graphic design. Um, programs please anybody who's watching this word and publisher are not graphic design programs if that's what you're using bless but no you need some I mean we do all have to start somewhere I don't we want do people to start somewhere you know, yes. well I won't bother then you know if, if I haven't got the funds or that, you know at my very starting true. point but there comes a point there's a tipping point I yep. think where you know you can get by with so much but to reach um, the type of customer that you may want to reach yes you're going to have to yes invest a little bit and sometimes you have to do that before you see the result 
yeah, it's before the horse comes. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. You need to invest in. I mean, it's like um, it's like going to school, isn't it? I mean, you went to your, your university degree. Was that you had to invest money and the time into doing your program um, to get the skills to then start earning an income afterwards. So it's exactly the same thing. You need to invest. Right. In, um, you know, yeah, but you don't get the reward before the investment. The investment does no. come first. Whether it's time, money, energy, it's got to come first. Exactly. That's interesting because I remember um, a relative of mine saying, I remember when I started my business and I was investing in every single course and back then yeah. I think we were paying a lot more for things, especially from America because they were yeah. so seemed to be the leaders at that time. Yes. Um, and the conversion wasn't that great for us. It was really... No. <laughs> yes. I remember a relative saying, you know, because I said, oh, my gosh, I'm spending all this blah, blah, blah. Um, and she said, yeah, but what do you spend on a university degree? Mm. You know, like you're gathering this for your, for your business. Like it's just another stage of investing exactly. in yourself. Yeah. You know, um, a reward of some type in what you want to do. So I definitely see it like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I've actually, to help people here, I've actually put together um, three tips. Great. Which I could whip through just to get people started and thinking. If you are thinking of writing a book and you've not yet started, <laughs> it's still just a little seed of an idea, that little angel sitting on your shoulder. Yes. Tips might just get you thinking. Okay. okay. Yeah. If I implement at least one of these things, um, yes. that would be a very good thing. So do you yep. want me just to launch into that, Tash? Please do. do. I'd love you to. Thanks. As we go to. Yeah, of course, of course. So yeah. I'd love, love to share. Love to see right. what you've got to, there's some of these tips to, for people just to, uh, yeah, get that little idea out of the brain. And well, I hope you like them. Oh, I'm sure yeah. we will. I'm sharing the screen. Am I sharing the screen? Uh, not quite yet, no. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. Okay, and share. All righty. Okay. All right, here we go. So three <laughs> things you can do to finally start writing a book because I know by the time people come to write, it's been a little while that, you know, these thoughts have been in their head. It's not usually just a spur of the moment thing, believe me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so I think it's like go. with most things, isn't it? It's kind of being, you know, just hiding behind there and just giving you a few pokes in the right, in the direction, saying, come on, come on, come on, not going to go away. Exactly, exactly. Well, I hope that for some, if somebody today, this is exactly what you need to hear. Great. Excellent. Right. Let's get is in. You, is this the potential writer? You're the entrepreneur, you're at your desk, you're doing, you're, you know, procrastinating. tidying, you're, you've been through several, you know, iterations of perhaps starting your book, torn up some papers there, you know, not happy Jan, basically. <laughs> now, I've got three steps. So, this first one might go against the grain for people who don't uh, yeah, who don't do this normally in their normal life. It's planning your book, basically. Mm -hmm. And this is because when you do that, it's, uh, you know, it really does unfuzz your mind and get you um, feeling more confident in your idea. So I remember I had a university lecture, I think it was political theory, and I still remember this. And she said, sometimes when we're writing an assignment, and we, are, we have writer's block and we're stuck, it's because we're not clear about what we're actually trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, that's actually right. And I have found that being able to, even though, even people who are more freewheeling um, and don't like to feel confined and constrained with a plan, just doing this, makes all the difference because you don't have to follow the plan to the t to a T. Yeah. Um, it's really just a starting point. It's sort of like a business plan. You don't need mm -hmm. to do 10 billion pages of a business plan of everything. You know, this is exactly how it's going to be. I mean, it wasn't Google or something when Apple done on the back of a napkin, you know, the initial. Totally. That, that is where most of the best plans come from is the back of a napkin that has a red wine stain around it. Absolutely. Exactly. But yeah, I, I agree with you too, is that planning, planning in business, planning a launch, planning a campaign, it's a roadmap. Now, it, yes. it's not set in stone. It's not... Um, you know, it, we, we can waver. I mean, we can take the scenic route. So, it, but it just yeah. gives us direction. It tells us that we're travelling north, we're travelling south. And that's, so that's really what you're saying here is let's just give the book 
or the the content of your book direction so that you know where you're going. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. So if you are stuck, if you haven't started your book, this could be the one thing that just opens the gateway for you. And it involves researching your initial concept. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that it has legs. And the reason I'm actually so um, full on about planning is because a mentor of mine um, called Anne McEvitt, who I did many courses with, um, even one very recently, but over the years, she's actually a serial entrepreneur. I don't think you've ever heard of her. She keeps a pretty low profile. She has worked with some amazing businesses and sold so many. I mean, she helps open businesses still to this day. She's been in the industry 30 years. And she is very full on about planning for any business that she starts, just researching. And I think her staff call her Sherlock because she uncovers information. They're like, how did you find that out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and some of it involves hiring people to do, you know, the research on her behalf. But other times she's just in there. She knows where to look to get this information. Yep. So this, I mean, um, I helped a client last year with planning her book and she realised that through this planning, there was no other book exactly like this mm -hmm. that she was planning. So that was so good for her to know. And she was able to see where she could fill a need. Right. So okay. It was really important. Yeah. So, uh, so that, can I ask you then, so in researching your initial concept, do you believe in your experience, is there ever um, an idea that just doesn't have legs? Because I know from a, a, a product um, business perspective, yeah, there's definitely yeah. some spaces where you just think, you know what, that, that business isn't viable, that product isn't viable, it just, it's too niche, it's not going to work. A book's the same because it's kind of, you know, just being a little bit different in there. That it it has to be too niche. I think because we're talking about books that are suited to your business, mm -hmm. you are, even if your book is only targeting a certain segment of your usual clients, right? Yes. know that, that you are yeah. catering to them and they're the ones you're wanting to attract mm -hmm. into your programs and True. so forth yep. anyway. So you can just make it work. Yes. So you might have an original idea and be like, oh, actually the need for this is really low even yes. out of my, you know, the type of clients that I attract. Yeah. So I need to broaden it a bit. So mm -hmm. but I can not know unless you started to do some of this research. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so part of that is the second point, making sure the book fits into your overall business strategy. So you can, of course, do a book that's totally non-related to your business. Um, yep. It's just that my mission is helping business owners mm -hmm. who, you know, want to improve their business, um, expose yep. it more through a book. Um, checking out the books competition, that's all part of this um, planning and part of the research. Yes. Um, even though we like to think, you know, no such thing as competition, blah, 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 and some people actually are so affected by looking at what others do that they don't want to yeah. see it because they might be influenced. That is actually a concern. I've had some people say, you know, I don't even want to know what they're doing because I might start writing the same thing or, you know, but you still have to have an awareness. Yes, I agree. Of what yeah. you're doing. It's a really fine line, isn't it, on just knowing what's going on, not getting caught up in comparisonitis. Comparisonitis. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Also to just, um, you know, but then, you know, not getting, not copying or, or feeling as though your idea has been influenced because of what you've seen somebody else doing. So, yeah, it's, yes. it's, I think it's a fine line getting that right. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, thinking ahead to a possible upsell, and this, again, is part of looking, um, making sure the book fits into your overall business strategy. So, you might already have a program or a product that you know that people would um, love to have as a result of reading the book. Um, or it might be that this is the opportunity for a creation of something new that really draws on every concept that's in the book and expands on it or, or the next step for people. So at least thinking of that when you start writing a book, it gives you the chance. It actually does help with structuring the book um, and where you might be able to place mention of this um, program, even if it hasn't yet been developed. Yeah. That's all, um, yeah, when you get into it, it really does help. Uh, and creating an outline of the book's chapters and sections, so that's getting more into the nitty gritty, but as I said, you know, it is flexible. It will change and evolve mm -hmm. and adapt as you go, but having this starting point, it saves you so much time later, especially if you come to editing and the, the editor's like, 
it just needs a major restructure. It just doesn't make sense that you've got this, that there. You know, that's more time and stress in a shorter period of time and it's going to cost you more with the editor. So, so think how, about it now. How, how do you go about creating that outline of the book's chapters? So what sort of that, what's that trigger point there to, to say, oh, well, you know, is it four chapters? Is it 20 chapters? And, and how, do I, how do I get that? Well, once you've gone through this research mm -hmm. um, process, that actually does help because you'll have already you'll already have your ideas that you've refined a bit um, and you'll be starting, you might have mind mapped it, you might have just mm -hmm. jotted down points and it'll start to make sense. There'll be a logical flow for, okay, well, I should start with this because that's what, you know, will make sense to be yep. first, followed by this step and this step and this step. Um, and it might be as you go through the book, to so say you move a chapter backwards because, you know, the way it's all fleshed out when you've written it, it makes more sense to move it. But yep. it, it actually does all just come together. Um, in the beginning yep. okay and creating a realistic publishing schedule um, and this can make you feel a bit scary because it's like this is real you know <laughs> it's yes. like yeah. hey it's out for Christmas it could be in the Christmas stockings of my oh, ideal my one. <laughs> <laughs> that means um, I don't need to do any shopping if I can just get my book out and there you go mum dad auntie's yep. out Cousins, there you go. I guess what you're all getting an autographed copy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but part of that is knowing, okay, realistically, how long do these things take um, and keeping yeah. it a buffer point. So this all actually ties in the planning of the book to my second golden tip, yes. which is creating a writing goal and schedule, which is part of the planning, but it's this is important enough. Um, even if you don't plan your book, which I don't recommend. Sorry, let, us, um, let me move us out of the way so we can see the screen. That's all right. No. Um, you, you should be doing this. So setting an overall writing goal that's in line with that schedule and then you'll have to sort of tweak the schedule um, if you can see that you can't do it. And it really does help you see whether you're being real about this because especially if this is your first time of writing a book, you don't often know your own capacity for what you can produce. So... Um, that's important and it does help you see where you already have time or we can create time um, and this is know thyself like you have to work out when do I work best you know is it um, an hour each morning is it 30 minutes at lunchtime while I'm at my desk eating is it uh, an afternoon once a week you know what works best for me and my schedule ties in you know, with my other things in my life because it is a commitment I think if you are a bit laissez-faire about it and don't make it a commitment it does it just drags on it can be two years later before you've actually written your book so it's having that momentum and just committing for a certain period of time okay every whatever I'm going to do this so a schedule helps you do that if you oh. just rely as I say here if you just rely on when you feel like it it ain't going to happen if it's in your schedule you'll do it and even people who really rail against having a schedule mm -hmm. they do better with it even yeah. though it might push every button and they're like, oh, this is just not me. Um, you know, it does, it really does help get results. And it's just one of those little disciplines. And writing a book is just another one of those personal growth things. You know, mm -hmm. and I forgot to mention, I've actually written three books myself. Oh, oh my goodness. How did, we, how did we forget to cover that? You know, cover that right at the start. <laughs> I missed that in there. That was during... Um, when my girls were younger, they were recipes okay. for children. Oh, um, fabulous. Yeah. So I had to work that around family. But, you know, it was great because I had a deadline. Yes. That always helps. So um, working with you, Joanne, um, what, what, um, what's a realistic deadline that you like to put in place for your clients? Well, it does it depend. depend. But, but you like to yeah. sort of push people along and make sure that they're hitting goals. Well, with editing, um, we try to keep that in a fairly condensed period. Mm -hmm. So and it does depend on, because with editing, we send information, um, send the edited work back to the author mm -hmm. and then they've got to have time to look at the questions and respond yeah. and send that back. So, you know, it depends on their schedule as well, but it can be like four to six weeks within. Oh, okay. That. But right. the writing is a bit different because that's, you know, over that can be, that is whatever you want it to be, really. If it, if it takes you a year, it takes you a year, but preferably not. <laughs> we get the better um, in some cases, even though you do want time to reflect on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, 
and there's a lot to be said for that. If you have a time frame, you know, you get on with it, you do get stuck in, so to speak. Uh, so basically, it's looking at the number of words, this is all from your planning too, deciding on the overall goal for the, goal for the number of words you want to write, say, you know, 40 to 60,000 words, um, and when you'd like to complete your manuscript, which then slots back into your overall schedule. Um, 40 to 60,000 so, words. Oh my goodness. I, it seems like it doesn't have to be that much. Some, you know, you can have 30,000 words. Well, it sounds like a lot, but if you break it down, it's actually not too bad. Um, so, you're thinking. Sorry? I know writing uni assignments, I'd sit there and go, oh my gosh, I've got to write 2,000 words. Woo I'm 250 words in. Great. Another, you know, 1,700 to go. So, now you're putting it out I there. I know. Into the 40. Wow. <laughs> it seems like a lot. It seems like it doesn't have to, it depends on the sort of book you have, like recipe books um, as much because oh, yes, of course. recipes are like, you know, a shorter number of words. Yeah. Uh, so the nitty gritty of this is looking at your calendar and just mm -hmm. adding in blocks of writing because if you don't put it in, it won't get done. Um, and ensuring that that scheduled writing block suits you. That is just super important, tailoring it to you. Um, even if having a schedule is natural, normally your thing. <laughs> Uh, so, step number three, so I'm aware I'd want to power through these for you. Oh, I forgot about this one, being realistic, realistic about the number of words you're likely to generate. And that's where that tweaking may come into place because you might realise, okay, that was a little bit ambitious. You know, I've got three kids and whatever, you know, this is my life. And I, that's just us as entrepreneurs, isn't it? We always, was it Peter, um, Peter Brock, the racing car driver, mm -hmm. used to say, Bite off more than you can chew and then chew like hell. Yep. Yes. And I think that's what too many of us probably do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, you so, have to be realistic. You don't want to burn out writing your book. No, oh, no. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So in this space too then, how, what do you recommend for people to do to get over writer's block? You know, if you're sitting at the blank screen, because we, you know, we hear about that all the time, and the, you know, coming from authors and a lot of very well-known authors have suffered from writer's block. So in your experience, um, what, what's, what do you recommend to your clients and the people you work with? Well, it does tie into the next point. Oh, I'm, I'm, um, I apologise for jumping <laughs> ahead. <laughs> kind of, let me, well, let's just go into it. Let's, uh, oh, three. oh, sorry, checking back in with your yeah. original overpass. I've already covered that, that's fine, but you need to be flexible. Receiving accountability, support and feedback because it is very difficult to do this in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. we do, it is potentially challenging. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, that's why people put it off because it can be so challenging. Um, and even people who write for a living, you know, of course they come across this. Um, although I did hear that Dame Barbara Cartland, the novelist, used to churn out at her peak 10,000 words a day so she had a real system working for her. <laughs> wow. wow. Which is a lot. It's a lot. Um, yeah, so it is easy to, you know, become... And then you feel bad about yourself. It's like when you don't fulfil a promise to yourself in anything, whether it be a health goal or something like that, yeah. when you just think, okay, I'll do it, you know, you, you're relying on your self-discipline. So having accountability, I mean, we don't want to look... Um, out of integrity or foolish or undisciplined to other people, people we respect, even to our spouses and, and family members. We don't really want to appear that way. So accountability, as you know, with coaching, Tash, yes. um, does actually help you stay on track. I mean, it's not going to be um, the case necessarily that you want the sort of coach I heard about years ago who, um, if you phoned up, you, you got on your call with this coach yeah. and they said, did you do blah, blah, blah? And you say, actually, no, I had my blah, blah, blah. Click. They actually hung up. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's a little harsh. But yes. to some people that might work. But that isn't the sort of accountability I'm talking about. It's more wow. just that, um, you know, knowing that other people know what you said you would do. Yeah. And yeah, I just want to be out of integrity with other people even if we kind of let ourselves get away with it yes so that's another reason and having other people I mean we all know this I'm pretty sure most of your community would have been part of a coaching mm. yeah definitely period of time 
just being able to share your ideas and think, you know, am I an idiot for even thinking this? Or, you know, what do you reckon about this? Because you may not want to talk to your, your spouse about this topic. They might just be, it's not their world. It's not mm -hmm. their thing. Yeah. Your family outside may not get it. Your friends, you know. So to be able to just bounce ideas off of people is, is really beneficial. Well, absolutely, because that's your network, isn't it? Is that, you know, that you've got your, your network of people who, um, you know, you may be involved in from, from school. And so they, you communicate with them about what's going on um, from, from a school perspective versus, you know, your local sporting club. You know, again, you've got that community. To so to have a community around you where you are all talking the same language, I mean, that's where, you know, that, that's how um, clubs and communities and... Um, that's right. And groups start from. So, absolutely. And they don't have to be your ideal clients either. No, um, no. And sometimes it's beneficial. It's better, really, that they are co they're, they're authors as well. They're looking to become authors. They're writing their book for their market. And so, the people you want helping give you feedback, as well as getting some feedback from people who would be your ideal mm -hmm. clients, to have people mm -hmm. who've also sort of got a marketing view, who are like, okay, I'm going to be outputting my book to my people as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be like, well, why, you know, I can see that this would make sense to include. Yes. So yeah. it's the benefit of, of that sort of peer feedback. Definitely. Um, and then there's also expert feedback. And this is what's so great. Swishers are saying with the books that I wrote, I had a deadline because I had a publisher. Um, I had to get those, you know, that manuscript done by a certain date. So that was fabulous. Uh, but if you get expert feedback as you go, mm -hmm. it takes away the worry of, Am, am I expressing this properly? Yeah. Um, you know, do I do I need help getting this right? I mean, you can leave that until editing, but as I've said before, mm -hmm. it will cost you more because the book will need a lot more work, um, and there's only so much you can do in a certain period of time. Whereas if you put that effort in and get the feedback during the writing process, totally. the quality of the book is yeah. increased because yeah. you can just polish things and you've got that bit more time and then the editor might still suggest something later, but you've probably worked out the bigger issues, the structure, you know, the things that make sense and don't make sense. So getting that in terms of what we're talking about here of getting started, just knowing that you had someone who could give you that feedback as you go might relax you enough <laughs> that you actually start, you know, okay, if I have someone I can rely on yeah. who knows what they're talking about, I can get through this. Absolutely. And it reduces the, the fear of the unknown because yeah. as opposed to handing over an entire manuscript to be checked and to receive feedback on, if you've been receiving the feedback small steps of the way, once you're putting that final product forward, you can at least turn around and say, well, I've already, you know, gone through all those steps and I know what I'm putting up here is is pretty good because other people have told me that along the way rather than just all at once. Um, yes. Cause, cause it takes away some of that worry. And yeah. That, yeah exactly. And the vulnerability too of being judged and getting the feedback and the, the potential that, oh, oh, now what you've done is wrong, at least by getting it step by step along the way, you're feeling confident with what it is that you're presenting. Yeah. Fabulous. Exactly. That's exactly. it. So this involves hiring, um, if you're going through the, the writing process part, um, hiring editor, preferably someone with coaching experience so that you're getting um, given the feedback in the best way yes. possible. And yeah. Getting through mindset blocks and so forth. You're not just being critiqued on your work. You're actually getting that emotional support as well mm -hmm. um, and being expected to, to submit by agreed upon deadlines. And that's... Yes. Okay deadlines you both agree on it's not being imposed on you by a publishing company saying eh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is if you're self publishing you can do it when it suits you um, and joining a supportive group of other aspiring authors um, and there may well be um, Facebook groups already sort of available for this thing. so if you would like to start your book soon oh this is one of my clients by the way um, Michelle Glassbrook she produced this book with me we started right from the planning stages with this um, and there she's selling it at an event somewhere. She's got a little, um, you know, payment thing there to receive payment for selling all the books. Yes. Um, so that was, that was a heap of fun. Um, I'm actually going to be pulling together a small group of um, entrepreneurs who want to write a book. And you know, you're going to get a fair amount of your book written, if not all of it, yes. depending on 
the length of it. And it starts at the end of the month, Wednesday the 27th of March. Uh, it's called the Your Book Written Program. And all that we've talked about today, you know, it has a specified time frame, so you're not going to be three years trying to get your book written. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you get that personalised feedback and support and you get started on this, you know. It's yes. another year of, okay, oh, this year I might start it. Like, okay, let's just do it. Let's just do it. That's it. Just do it. As Peter yeah. Brock says, bite off more than you can chew. <laughs> you like hell. <laughs> you like hell, exactly. Um, so this is actually another client of mine, Finding Freedom, Finding Me, um, Jodie Kalpanos. That was at her book launch, that little pile of books. Yeah. So I just love seeing the books that sort of come out into the world. It's like we've made this real. It was an idea. It was a concept. It was just a wow. thought. And it is real. You can touch it. Uh, so what I've done is because I know that planning is so important, we kick off with a plan that book online workshop. Um, and even if you've started your book yeah. and you've done like three chapters or something like that, and you've got a pretty good idea of what you're doing, doing this will help because you will do that deep dive that you may not have yeah. already done into really looking at research and also throwing ideas around with me and the group. Yes. So it's actually going to, you know, lift the whole concept of your book mm -hmm. and take it to places that you may not have actually thought about. Right. Uh, and part of that will set up the schedule and look at, you know, what's going to work for you. Okay. So in that, there'll be 10 weeks after we've done the, the, the workshop, which is over two days, over a week, so you can do more market research in between, right. um, finishing yes. off. Um, 10 weeks of group support calls, so you can come on and throw ideas around with all of us and um, if everyone's you know had their ideas done we can just use it as a co-working time so that you dedicate that time to just writing but yes. mostly um, I'm expecting it would be a lot of questions and discussion may as well use it for that time uh, now this is really juicy this is wow you you submit to me it's um, a couple of weeks after the planning so you've got time to start writing um, feedback on the batches that you submit. And you can do up to 4,000 words. Do not freak out about 4,000 words. It's actually not that hard. No, I'm sure once, if you're writing something that you're passionate about and is coming from your heart, it is pretty easy to yeah. write. Yeah. Yes. And really, this is kind of first draft stuff. It's not what you would be sending to an editor. So yeah. I will get it. I'll turn it into a PDF and I will, if you know the sticky note facility in the yeah. Adobe Reader, I, like I do with my editing, I put a sticky note on something where I've got a question for you or a comment and wow. it's not just going to be this would be better worded this way or have you thought about it'll be wow this is fabulous you know it's encouraging as well because I think a lot of people get put off the editing process because they think oh no it's going to have red panels through it it's going to be all these <laughs> things part of editing is encouraging as well you know, there's, there's going to be great stuff about what you've written and we want to develop that and keep you enthusiastic and, and wanting to go. So know that it's a supportive journey. It's not just, you know, have you thought about this? It's always worded in a way that's you know, respectful and um, with love and wanting the best for you and, and the book. So you'll get that sent back to you um, as soon as possible within a couple of days and then yeah. you can just... You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to mm -hmm. implement what I've suggested. You can just open each sticky note and look at my suggestions um, and come back to that at the end and actually yeah. implement it. But that will then, all that information will help you in the writing of your subsequent chapters because you'll be, oh, you know, Joanne said it uh, might be better to focus on this or expand this or flesh out that or, you know, maybe we don't need that topic now. Or So it actually informs and makes it easier and improves the quality of your subsequent writing. Wow, so, that's fabulous. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, to get that feedback. That's really huge to have somebody reading it and to be able to say, hey, we, from an expert opinion, to say, hey, this is what you know, this is what readers want. So if I'm picking up your book, this is this is it. Look, you've you've yeah. lost me. You've gone off on a tangent over this way. That that's so valuable, Joanne. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and where there's time and space, I'll look at little you know, minor things like grammar or yeah. spelling and things like that. But really, that can be fixed for you at the editing stage. It's more the the concept and yeah. the content that we want to look at. So that's. That's a pretty big deal. Like, and, and, I, and, and I expect too that that would help 
people to stay on track as well because if I know that I've got 10 weeks and I get to submit 10 batches of um, of, of up to 4,000 words. Yep. Yeah. Which, that's 40,000 words, which that's that could be your entire book. That could be your entire wow. book. Um, and in that, I do allow one week's leeway. So life happens and, you know, your kids are sick, the dog's thrown up, mm -hmm. whatever. You can't submit a certain week. I will give you one week you can add on to the end where that's included. But otherwise, I need to keep it in a container for you so that your subconscious doesn't kind of try to yeah, wriggle out altogether yes. and say, can I just bank that and come back to you in a year? No. Yeah. This is the container for you mm -hmm. to get this done. So, yeah. But we do have that one week's leeway just in case. <laughs> Fabulous. And so, yes, there's built in accountability because on the group calls, you know, we'll all be supporting each other and knowing what we're submitting. Um, and you'll have me as well to yeah. be accountable. Yes. To you. So, know, valuable. Do well. <laughs> so, here's a special oh. offer beautiful Tash. <laughs> that is such a good picture of you. That could actually be on a book cover. That is a really oh, good thank picture. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so normally, of course, working with someone one-on-one -on -one, um, is usually more of an investment. Um, so for, for what yeah. I've told you there, apart from group calls, but a weekly personal call, um, wow. it would be $4,000. But for this, with the benefit of the group, it's only $19.97. That but, is insane. Well, before you get to... Excited oh, about okay. that. I already got um, into that show that. that, that I there's know. so much value in that. And so well, I know value. that you attract awesome people into your community and I love having Thank awesome you. people in my community as well. I only work with nice people. That's my policy now. Yes, I think absolutely. Yeah. I do too. Yes. Yeah. That's why we're not in corporate, right? We want to work with great people. It. Exactly. So, exactly, yes. Give your community an extra push if they need it, um, $200 discount. Uh, oh, Joanne, that, that is fabulous. So that Thank really you. is, like there's so much personal stuff in there. I mean, 40,000 yes. words, feedback on that, that, that's invaluable, really. That is, it really, so, yes. I've got well, to agree with that, that, that it really is. There's so much value that you've just shared there. So I know, and I don't, you know, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I am a very good editor. This is my thing. This is, and high quality is what I'm after. And it's what I want for self-published books and for your yeah. books. So I would love to be able to help you with that. Um, and if you go to this page, richlifebydesign.com forward slash your book Tash, that has yes. the special offer for Tash. Um, yes you'll actually see a couple of testimonials there too from clients mm -hmm. um, and that will tell you what their experience has been like um, of yeah. working with me. But we do start soon and we'll sort of have to close the doors by the Monday mm -hmm. uh, okay. of that week so that I've got time to look at your, because you'll send me, I'll send you um, a document to fill out so that I know what you've already thought about for your book because yeah. that gives me a chance to start doing some research as well on your behalf for our planning day. So... Um, you get the benefit of me doing that bit of extra work for you there as well. Uh, so, because this could be you, and still with that frazzled. Yes, I'm going to say one of the things that I love about what you do is that it's not about churning out books really quickly and quantity. It, it, you really focus on the quality that you, yeah. that the people that you work with, they do have a really important message to share and. You're not going to let it be diluted because of, you know, let's just turn it out really, really quickly. It's a high quality product that you're wanting to do because, hey, that's, that's what we deserve if, if we're putting something out there, if we're putting pen to paper and we're going to write it. I don't want, and I don't, as a, as a reader, I don't want to be reading something that I can tell has just been smashed out really quickly. Yeah. You're almost making me cry because that is, that's exactly, you exactly, you know me, like that's exactly what I'm after. I just think if you're going to do it, do it yeah. well and be respectful of your readers and give them a, yes. a, a book that makes sense to read because we say in editing that um, editing is a bit like gardening. You only notice when it hasn't been done. <laughs> so, yes. think, yeah. think, <laughs> anything that impedes communication, that trips people up and that goes on for too long or makes them trip over something and they lose their train and they're not absorbed yeah. in it, that's impeding communication that, you know, could be benefiting them. 
Yeah. So today, you know, we don't need perfection, but we try to avoid typos. You know, we want things to be beautiful and high vibration. And for you to be so proud of this book yeah. that you have brought out into the world, you know, that's that's exactly what I'm after. I'm very much a high quality person. Absolutely. And the thing is too, for me as a business owner, I put quite a lot of pride in the work that I do and the message that I share. And so, you know, I'm not going to, and if I'm using this book to support me in my business as, as your, your clients do, hey, I'm positioning myself as a high level expert in this field and with this book. And that's a demonstration of that rather than it just being something that I really quickly turned out just to say, hey, look, hey, look, I've got three books behind, my, behind me that I can, you know, that says that I'm an expert. The, the quality of what you put into the book is what demonstrates that you're an expert in your field. And you helping me get that out is just yeah. fabulous. That's, that's what we need. I'm so glad that you see that. That just fills my heart with joy. That's why I wanted you on the show, Joanne. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, I just thought I'd finish with this. This is um, yes. a current client of mine, and her name's Tash as well. There's another oh, Tash yes. in my world. Um, Natasha Hogan, and uh, she's up your way too. She's um, okay. in Just in oh, the world. Yeah, yeah. Not far. Yes, well, it definitely is up this way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's very tropical looking in the background. Yes. This is actually the photo shoot that she did for the cover. Oh, beautiful. Uh, this big photo. You can see the beautiful cover here that our designer that is stunning. Um, yeah. Isn't that gorgeous with her little babies on there? Yes. Um, and we actually use this picture of Tash on the back, just sort of the circle around her head. So that's her author photo on the back. And she's, you know, obviously going to be using these photos, be able to use them in um, marketing and on her website and so forth. So she's just so excited um, to be working on her book as well. And an absolute delight to work with and a big mission and a big message to get out as well. So that could be you. You know, you could be this time next year holding wow. your book. Exactly. <laughs> or maybe earlier so they can go in the Christmas stockings for all your family. Oh, that's right. That's it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes. but you do need to get a wriggle on because you need to allow for editing and design and, and all that sort of thing and getting it out in time to market it for Christmas. So I'll just go back to that page if people wanted yes. to see the URL. Um, but I'd love to have some of the, the Team Tash. Um, yeah, go for it, guys. <laughs> I know so that I there's definitely so some... Oh, absolutely. I know there's people in my community that are talking about writing books. I know that they are there. And this, wow, I, I've just got to say that is incredible value to have this, that level of support to, to produce a quality product. Um, yeah. That's it. That's fabulous. So, yeah. and, and we know, as I said, it can be challenging. Some people find writing a book easy. Not all of us do. Um, but just to see the transformation that people go through and to know that can be coached through those blocks and that that's yeah. exploding their personal growth and how proud you are at the end when you think, I did it, I actually did it, I faced that challenge, I got support to help me face it and I did it. Yeah. You know, that's just so rewarding. So, so it's multiple, it's the book and it's the person who's, you know, grown through this whole beautiful experience. So what... In your experience, where do you see is, um, is one of the main challenges people have when it comes to writing their book? Um, I think it's just that the mindset of it's overwhelming and it's too hard and I don't know where to start and can I do it? Yeah. Am I up to the job? You okay, know? yes. And a lot of us secretly have fears that we're not good enough. You know, and we might yeah. have achieved it. We did it in our business. We started our business. That's going. That's up and running. That's fabulous. Um, but that took a bit of energy and self belief yes. and pushing through boundaries and getting that. And this is like, oh no, it's another boulder to push up a hill. I really want to do it though, and I keep being pulled to do it. And I, you know, it's part of my destiny. I know I'm meant to do it. It's just. You don't have to do it on your own. It doesn't have to be no. as hard. <laughs> no, and that's it. That's like everything. Is that, but you don't need to do it on your own. That there are experts there, and and people who who you know, like like you said, this you love this. And when you're working with people who love what they do, it seems to me I love what I do. Um, yes. It's it's so fabulous because all I want to do is I want to see my clients succeed exactly the same as you. You want to see your clients succeed and it's just this love and passion that gets out. Yeah. So having that, 
So you feel that one of the challenges is it's just that people get overwhelmed by being so big and yeah. they... Um, and are they up to the job? Yeah. And, the, and, and so and just needing that support to, to get... To get them there, to get started, right? Those first few words and then the momentum builds and Yeah, exactly. So if you think with this course, this program, 1797, I think, well, I could just write on my own, I could get it done. Well, you of course could. You can. Of course you could. <laughs> but you may actually end up in a total cash sense, end up paying that much mm. more for editing the book anyway. Yeah. That's and it. That's if you get it written. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're yes. not tearing your hair out trying to get it written. So and what and you do, you do this, this program really has it. If you stick with the program, you commit yourself to it, you will get your book written and published. Yeah, I mean, depending on the length of it, if you commit yeah. to it and it is only a 40,000 word book, that's mm -hmm. what you'll be getting feedback on. So, I mean, you can, if you're 60,000 and you want extra, then we can, you know, talk about working personally. But as part of this group, you will get 40,000 words critiqued and it's not, it doesn't have to be super polished or whatever. It's first draft stuff that you're sending to me and it will affect your whole book and get it written for you or you'll be writing it within that period as much as possible. <laughs> oh, I think that's fabulous. That's fabulous. So the one bit of advice that you would give somebody who's thinking about writing a book is besides signing up for your program, of course, but what, what would you say? If there's sort of somebody sitting at home going, yeah, I don't know, will I, won't I, maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think all in your community, it's in my community as well, that yeah. I'm quite conscious. And I think... If you've got that, mm, will I, won't I, you really need to sit down and just tune in and just think, you know, listen to what your gut's telling you. Yeah. With what I'm meant to be doing. And if you keep getting little signs, you know, just tune in and stop blocking them out. I know life's busy, but just sit and just really take a bit of time and think, you know, it is going to be a journey. Is this what I'm meant to be doing? You know, yeah. is this book about, and you know, think about the overall concept. You don't need to think about the details because they'll work themselves out. And just think, is this what I'm meant to be doing? And if you get that, what is it on Marie Kondo when she says, does this spark joy? Yes. <laughs> do you get that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, you know, do you get that feeling of knowing and of, yes, this is, even if I feel really scared, I know. Yeah. You know when you're meant to do something and you just... Yeah keep pushing it away yes. so that would be my advice is to actually tune in and you know and draw the line in the sand if you're not if you're getting out wishy-washy mm -hmm. and it's not fear it's more maybe it's not a book maybe it's something else I'm meant to be doing yeah. Yeah, listen to that like, okay the book's off the table mm -hmm. and you know it might be that it's meant, really meant for you five years from now yeah but if, if you tune in and it's like ping <laughs> yes I'm meant to be doing it but I'm scared then and, I think too, and one of the things too, working with you too, Joanne, is helping people find the time because that's one of the things that, that one of the biggest objections that people have is, I don't have the time, which we both know is rubbish. It's just, no, we need to make it a priority and make other things a less priority. So how much of a priority is it? But by working with you, you help me schedule it into my day to find the time to type or to, to write um, and to, to flesh the, the story out of me, which, you know, that, that helps yes. get to the exactly. end. Exactly. And if it really freaks you out, the thought of, okay, it could be out for Christmas, um, part of your planning could be that you don't set a definite publishing date. It's just, okay, it's going to take this long once yeah. the manuscript's finalised and ready to go to editing. Um, but perhaps that is next year. I just need to get it written and then I can sit on it for the rest of the year and just prepare myself for the, for the being visible because that is an issue that people have as well as oh, visibility. Um, yeah. Once this book comes out, this is something else that's me and this is so personal. It's I've written it, you know, people are going to judge me. So we need to address some of those mindset blocks. But if it helps you get started at the start, just, just focus on the writing bit, okay? And yeah. the schedule might be next year. Don't make it never, but yep. it doesn't have to flow on straight after you finish writing. Yeah. No, that's yeah. fabulous. I hope that's helped. That's great. And thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It is such a, a 
wonderful, wonderful offer to, um, to my community. So thank you. So guys, get on board with this. Now, Joanne, I need to ask you, before you leave, what are you reading now? What book do you have next to your bed? Oh, okay. <laughs> There's always a few on the go, isn't there? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm reading, because I often have audio books as well while I'm okay, doing yes. this yeah. around the house. Uh, Chillpreneur by Denise Duffield Thomas, which has okay. just come out. Yes. Uh, she self-published her yes. early on. Look at her career. Yeah. She's, you know, that's mm -hmm. really driven her into the stratosphere. Yeah. Um, so I've got that on audio book as well. I've got still getting through the Michelle Obama Becoming book. Yes. Yes. I haven't read that book. Uh, fabulous things about it. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's another book. Uh, I think it's Run Fast, Work Hard or something like that, even though I don't necessarily follow, you know, the very masculine, yeah. aggressive kind of philosophy. It's about a female entrepreneur from England, uh, Maxine Horn, I think her name is. Uh, and it's been written by a journalist I really respect, Madonna yep. King. Um, and it's just interesting to see. I think she's um, the owner of one of the largest telcos in Australia. Okay. So done phenomenally well from, you know, fairly average upbringing. Um, so, yeah, even though that's corporate world stuff, I love to just sort of read about women's journeys. I'm very much into women's um, biography, you know, Clinton biography, autobiography and Julie Gillard and, you know, all that sort of thing. That's, that's what I love to read. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was well, look, you know, that's your world is, is books. and. I know. Well, what about you? What are you reading? Um, I have actually just picked up, I've just finished reading um, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, um, yes. which I adored, absolutely adored. Um, and I'm, I'm not a person that can have a couple of books on the go. I'm a one book at a, a time girl. Um, right. And I have just picked up Lisa Nichols' Abundance Now. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, I love Lisa Nichols. She was in yes. The Secret. She was fabulous. Yes. Yeah, oh. fabulous. So, yes. So, I've just just picked that one up to start I'll that one going. That one up as well. Oh, why yeah. didn't you get that on audiobook? Because she's probably read that herself. Probably, imagine. yeah. Yeah, I would I love when authors read their own books. I yes. just think that just adds to the energy. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Well, I've got to say, I'm excited that I'm able to pick up books to read for the joy and the love of it again, um, as opposed to having been my master's last year, which was just, yeah. I did a lot of reading, a lot of textbook reading, which is all, you know, it was great stuff. I really enjoyed reading yeah. it. But sometimes it's just, it's nice sometimes to have choice and picking up, yes. say, I, I don't have to read this for any other purpose except for the pure joy of it. Exactly, exactly. I hear you, I hear you, yes. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> So that is wonderful. Well, thank you so I'm much. Such a nice call today. Thank you, Tash. Oh, thank you. Look, thank you for sharing these tips on about getting started writing. You're such generous, generous offer here um, for the community. Um, yes, and we've got to get more books out in the world. We've got to change the world, Tash. Do. That's what these books are. They're doing light work. You know, they're exactly. what's happening in the world. We need this yeah. stuff out there. And changing. good quality books too. So yes. Exactly. Exactly. Fabulous. So excellent. So thank you very much, um, everybody. Thank you for joining in. And um, if you want to know more about Joanne, you can follow her on all the social media channels, Rich Life by Design. Yes. That's yes. The one. Yep. And of course, you can find out more about this program, richlifebydesign.com forward slash your book Tash to get that amazing discount. Yes. So get out there, get that book written, share that story, let the world know what you've got. And yep. above all, go out and be amazing because you are. I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye. Thanks. Bye.